Marvelous hello, friends and loved ones, how are you today? And welcome to the very first episode of my show, where I'm going to talk about video games. I had a lot of debate about what game I wanted to talk about for my first episode, and in the end, I decided on... this one. Glover actually holds a pretty special place in my heart. It's the first N64 game that I ever owned. See, when I bought my N64 from a local game shop, there were only two games in the entire store that I was able to afford. Glover, and some wrestling game. I don't actually remember which one. Let's, uh, let's say it was this one. And let's hope I made the right choice. Glover was released in 1998 for the PC and N64. It was the very first game made by Interactive Studios, and it was published by Hasbro. A PlayStation version was released in November 1999, and Interactive Studios changed their name to Blitz Games in... 1999? Wait, so does that mean they changed it in the one month remaining in the year after Glover came out for PlayStation? I mean, they're still called Interactive Studios on the PlayStation port. I'm going to assume it's not the best sign if a company has only made two games and changes their name right after the port of their first game. Glover starts out in a peaceful land with peaceful trees and peaceful butterflies, and every peaceful thing can live peacefully ever after. Look at how bright and colorful it all is. I can't wait to explore this place. We're introduced to a jolly wizard named... Uh, the Wizard, who has decided that he won't let something silly like not having hands stop him from doing magic. With the help of his two magical gloves, he decides to just chuck some magic into more magic, and then it blows up turns him into stone, and the explosion knocks one of the gloves into the magic and sends the other flying out the window. The explosion sends the crystals on top of the castle flying off in different directions, and Glover is able to pay attention just long enough to turn them into bouncing rubber balls, and they get sent off into different portals to different worlds. Like we all have in our yards. And back in the castle, we're introduced to our main antagonist. Cross Stitch. Falling into the magic made the remaining glove evil. And also very fat. Because, I don't know, fat people are evil? And mean? And gross? I guess. And that just about sums up the plot of Glover. Go to the other worlds, grab onto the wizard's balls, and then do what you gotta do with them till he isn't hard anymore. So let's start our bright cartoony adventure with Glow oh my gosh, look at this place. It's terrifying. Am I still at the castle or did Glover get knocked into Silent Hill? Oh, and you hear that laughter? Yeah, get used to it, because you're gonna be hearing it a lot. So after returning the first ball to the wizard, it's time to go into our first actual world. Atlantis before it sunk, apparently. This is the level that gets us used to the game controls. And by that I mean this is the level where you learn how frustrating this game controls. Glover moves fine on his own, if somewhat slow, but the game is essentially an escort quest for an inanimate object, and a lot of the time you have to bring the ball with you to activate switches and puzzles. Glover can die by getting hit by enemies enough times, or by the ball getting destroyed. In order to climb with the ball, you have to bounce it, which can be frustrating as you'll basically be mashing B trying to get to where you need to go. The ball has four forms that you can shift between to get through different puzzles. The default ball can bounce and help get Glover to higher areas. It's also easy to throw, but easy to pop. It's the one you'll probably find yourself using the most. The bowling ball is... well, it's a bowling ball. It's heavy. I'm amazed Glover can throw it like that without his non-existent wrist snapping. The bowling ball is almost impossible to break, and you'll use it to get through a lot of obstacles and beat quite a few enemies with. The... pinball? I guess is probably my personal favorite. It's light, so you can move pretty fast, and it even bounces better than a ball like that probably should. And the last form is the default crystal form. With it, you can... do this. Can I just say that Glover's anguished scream from something bad happening to the ball is never not funny to me? <laughs> Seriously. 
Seriously though, the crystal sucks. It only serves one purpose. See, each level has a number of these card things called garabs, and if you collect them while holding the crystal, you'll get more of those sweet, tasty points. You know, so you can brag to all of your friends about your high score on Glover. Okay, so we've covered plot and covered the main gameplay mechanic. Let's get through Atlantis. We get through three pretty easy levels that show us a bit more about the game. In the second level, we're introduced to these magic potions that give Glover special bonuses, such as being stronger, faster, or being able to fly. Seeing as how the game introduced us to magic potions by having them blow up, turn our owner into a statue, and turn our brother into a fat, evil glove, I don't know if Glover should be so eager to pick these things up. But now that we've gotten through the three levels, let's hop in the fish hot air balloon that will take us into the skies of the sunken city of Atlantis. And by that I mean it takes us to this weird coliseum type room, where Crostitch is there to give us our first boss fight. It's a whale. Crab. Fish. Yeah. This may also be a good time to bring up the game's camera. See this view right now? This is where we start the level. It's never a good idea to start a boss fight at an angle that doesn't let you see the boss lumbering towards you. You've just gotta grab your ball and try and get it out of the way. You can move the camera slightly with the C buttons, but often it'll stop you from moving it any further long before you're looking at what you want to see. So, after a bit of ball throwing and ground pounding, the whale crab fish is vanquished. Glover takes his ball and goes home. One world down, five to go. One of the things I actually really like about Glover is you do feel a sense of progression as you play. As you bring the crystals back to the fountain, the world around you does start to get livelier and less... deathy. So our next world is the carnival. I remember loving this world as a kid. It's got happy circus music and bright colors and even some fun games to play. Like this whack-a-mole where the enemies make fart noises when they die. Or this pachinko machine slot machine, or this test your strength game where you're trying to launch the wooden mallet rather than using the mallet to... I don't think Glover knows how that game works. On one of the circus levels, I had a run-in with this juggling chicken and my sound got all messed up. Hear that? It's... it's not supposed to sound like that. I decided to get to the end of the level and... Huh. It froze. Okay, well, we'll just reset it and... Oh, no. All the save files are gone. All of them. Well, th that sucks. But tell you what, now's a good time to talk about one of my favorite features of this game when I was a kid. Cheating! Yes, Glover comes with a variety of cheat codes, and the game lets you know what it thinks of your maturity if you decide to use them. <laughs> I'm an adult. Some of the cheats are simply cosmetic, some are game-breaking, some are just... dumb. How about this low-gravity cheat where I can kill myself in the overworld with fall damage? Whee! Yep, I'm dead. Okay, so I'm just gonna use the call ball cheat and the checkpoint cheat, just so I can get past the levels I already did nice and quickly. Okay, now let's finish off the circus world. The final level in the stage sends us into the Big Top, where Crossstitch uses his evil fat magic on this poor, helpless, ugly clown to make him bigger and much more terrifying. I'm not even afraid of clowns and I find this guy unnerving. This is an incredibly easy boss fight, you just avoid him and the pies he throws and when you get a chance, throw the ball at the switch. The first switch gets him blown up with this cartoony bomb. The second switch punches him in the face with a boxing glove, which seems like a step down from the bomb, honestly. And finally, when you hit this red light, it drops the piano. Ha! That'll teach you to be a clown. He is dead. So after the carnival, we make our way to Pirate World. The levels themselves aren't really anything too special. They could certainly be more exciting for, you know, Pirate World. I mean, you don't even see any pirates. But we make it through with skills and know-how, and we make it to the boss. 
these monkeys! You know, I don't really like any of the bosses in Glover, but I like that none of the bosses in this game are fought the same way. Every boss has a different strategy, utilizing different mechanics the game sets up. It's pretty cool. But these monkeys suck and I want them to die. The next world is Prehistoric World. This one is pretty fun. The first level introduces the mechanic of your ball building up snow. When it's covered in snow, you can't switch its form and you have to bounce to get the snow off. This bee is a jerk. Also, the third stage opens with this Triceratops who thinks Glover is trying to steal her purse. I don't really have anything further to add. That's just funny to me. Dinosaur problems. The boss of the prehistoric stage is a total joke. Crossstitch thaws this T-Rex out that looks like he belongs in his own platformer with his sunglasses and Doc Martens. Seriously, slap that guy on the cover of Croc and tell me he looks out of place. Anyway, he's all the way down there, and we're all the way up here. He shoots some fireballs, but they're easy to dodge. Just roll the ball down the hill and hope it hits him. Which it will, because he moves really slow and he's a big target. Don't even worry about the ball, because thanks to magic, it comes back to you automatically when it hits the bottom. Thanks, magic. So we hit him with snowballs until he explodes, leaving nothing but a pile of smoldering shoes. That's oddly depressing. Even as a kid, I thought that was weird. I hope the three minutes of sweet, unfrozen life he had were worth it. With five of the crystals recovered, the world is starting to look pretty bright and friendly. So now I think it's time we go to the fortress. Of fear! I find it weird the game saved the spooky, haunted house level for when we're almost done with the game. I really feel like this place should have either been first or last. Anyway, these levels are a bit more frustrating, but they're nothing new. Bring the ball with you, keep it from being destroyed, hit switches with things. Just try not to die from rolling into a bottomless pit. The boss of this place is this Frankenstein's monster dealy, and he doesn't even really seem like he wants to hurt you. He's just kind of wandering around. But the way you beat this guy is you've got to ground pound these platforms to lower them, which raises the one on the opposite side up a notch. Make a staircase up to the ball switch, and use it to electrocute him so badly he explodes into pieces. Hey, um, y you wanna... I, I need to... Y y your head is kind of... Look, I, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just get around you here. If it sounds like I'm starting to get a little tired of Glover at this point, it's because I am. But hey, only one world left, and we're gonna go out of this world. That's right, folks, we're going into space. Hey. Low gravity, monsters that take your ball, turn it into a crystal, and spit it into the air. Jerks. Conveyor belts, doors, every sci-fi cliche you can think of, this place has it. But now we're here. The final boss. This adorable tiny robot. That cross-stitch turns into a big robot. Here's the thing, though. This boss fight isn't a boss fight. Cross-stitch may not realize this, but he's done what every dumb villain does. He has given us the weapon we need to defeat him. All you have to do is get in between the robot's legs with the ball, and Glover will go inside it through its... leg... elevator? By the way, what you're seeing right now? I'm not controlling this. This is automatic. Even when the game is controlling itself, it has trouble with the controls and the camera. So Glover drops the ball we've been working all this time to protect into the, I guess, ammo shoot? I don't really know what things are anymore. And Crossstitch gets into his own giant robot. Wait, is this game really concluding with an epic giant robot battle? Did this game take a turn for the best? Well, it's a giant robot battle at least. All you do in this fight is mash A to shoot balls at Crossstitch's robot, or at the missiles he's firing at you. Or you could be a big cheater pants like me and turn on infinite lives and ignore the missiles entirely. Oops. Man, we just do not care what happens to that ball anymore, do we? Shoot the robot enough and it explodes and sends Crossstitch flying off somewhere never to be seen again. We deliver the final crystal to the fountain and the wizard is cured. Glover and his wizard friend step outside and... Oh look, it's Crossstitch! The wizard grabs Glover and shoots Crossstitch so he'll behave. You know, like a good person would. 
Also, this makes me wonder if Glover had the ability to do that the entire time. So they celebrate with a thumbs up, and then the game tells me congratulations, but I missed all six bonus levels. <laughs> I sure did, Glover. I sure did. And that's about it for Glover. Not much else worth mentioning. Oh wait, you know, there is one thing. The credits. Glover has some of the longest credits I have ever seen. They clock in at over 11 minutes. And it's not like they're showing anything interesting, like the gloves working together or the wizard doing cool stuff in the worlds. No! Most of it just focuses on this fat swinging chicken. Who even are you, swinging chicken? The credits go on for so long, I started wondering if we were going to see entries for The Guy Who Delivered Sandwiches on Thursday, or Darren's Pet Goldfish, or One Line of Code. I didn't make that last one up. That's actually in the credits. The end. And then the game just kind of drops you back into the mode select. No bonus scenes afterwards, nothing unlocked, just back to the main game. This was Glover's only game. There was artwork talking about a Glover 2, where Crossstitch would have come back, but I guess it just wasn't meant to be. I don't know what more they could have done with Glover, but I think there could have been something here if they'd just balanced out the controls and the camera. In the end, I have to ask myself, do I still like Glover as much as I did when I was a kid? Well, of course not. But, you know what? I think I still kinda liked it. But I certainly didn't glove it. Look, what do you want from me? It's my first episode. Hey everybody, thanks for watching my very first game review. This is something I've been wanting to do for a long time now, and it means a lot to me that you're watching. If you liked it, go ahead and click that like button, and if you want to see more videos in the future, click that subscribe button. Leave a comment down below with suggestions on what you'd like to see and ways I can improve the show. You can also follow me on Facebook and Twitter for more updates, and until next time, take care.